Welcome, one and all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Very kind, very nice. Welcome, everybody, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And all right, it's coming on. You feel that? You tingle? Tingle? We got to get it right back to where we started from here at the Ed Sullivan Theater. And it feels good to be back, because I was out last week for uh, just a touch of the COVID. It was technically my third uh, bout of the COVID, so let me just uh, get my card out here. <laughs> you know, there you go. All right. There you go. Oh, I, I, I get a free hoagie that I can't taste. <laughs> but I am uh, I'm feeling good. <laughs> I'm feeling good, partly because I'm back on my feet, but mostly because Jim Jordan will not be Speaker of the House. Oh. Mm. 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 At this point, at this point, Jordan might have to go back to his previous job at the Museum of Natural History. <laughs> this is an historic humiliation for a man who will not be in the history books. He was undone not by the usual MAGA bomb throwers, he was brought low by a coalition of Republican moderates, which shocked Jordan's supporters who had relied on the maxim, moderates always cave, a tale as old as time. <laughs> that, of course, is a, is a Disney reference, though I think Jordan prefers that song from Encanto. We don't talk about what happened at Ohio State. <laughs> now, as we say goodbye, Google it. Google it. As we say goodbye to the speaker of the nothing, Jim Jordan, we're <laughs> left exactly where we started 20 days ago. As former speaker Kevin McCarthy said, it's back to the drawing board. And I believe we have a picture of that drawing board. <laughs> They're faxed. They're fracked. Flaxed. So the House GOP has to go through the whole rigmarole again. This time, nine Republicans will battle for the top post. Tom Emmer from Minnesota, Kevin Hearn from Oklahoma, Jack Bergman from Michigan, Byron Donalds from Florida, Mike Johnson from Louisiana, Sam Nayman from Tennessee, Dan Marks from Wisconsin, Ben Warner from Georgia, and Ken Sherman from Pennsylvania. And I started making up names partway through that list. <laughs> and literally, no one knows when I did, including me. Here's the actual group of nine candidates. It's a uh, bit of a sausage caucus. Here's a fun fact about one of the candidates. Texas Congressman Pete Sessions is not related to former Senator Jeff Sessions, despite the shared name and identical resemblance. <laughs> so he's not so much a brother from another mother as an elf from another shelf. <laughs> doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really make sense, but it rhymes. <laughs> it rhymes, that's all that matters. As of this taping, yes, as of this taping, is this true, we continue to have no speaker? We have no, continue to have no speaker of the House. We know that the Republicans held a candidate forum today at 6.30 p.m. and that candidates are slated for two-minute speeches. Now, two minutes may seem short, but I know what I would say. Ladies and gentlemen of the GOP, I am not Jim Jordan. I yield my time. <laughs> <laughs> One man who thinks he can get the votes is Oklahoma's Kevin Hearn, who believes he has what it takes because he used to run a fast food franchise. Well, I think what our, our members of our conference are looking for is somebody that's got a broader depth of leadership, something different. Uh, you know, I've, I spent 35 years in business working with probably with one of the largest brands in the world, a McDonald's. Running McDonald's qualifies you to be second in line to the presidency. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -da. I'm doubting that. <laughs> now, there's more. Mm. I could go. <laughs> I could go for some fries. <laughs> oh, there's, there's more uh, good news out there. Two of Trump's co-defendants have flipped on him. Hey! Hey! Mm. Mm. 
The first is Trump lawyer and aunt leaving a scathing Yelp review about the family barbecue, <laughs> Sidney Powell. Now, you, you may remember Sidney Powell. She pushed crazy conspiracy theories about how the ghost of Hugo Chavez rigged the 2020 election and, and promised to publish non-existent evidence of widespread fraud, vowing to release the Kraken. <laughs> Turns out, in the end, it was less release the Kraken and more, I think she might be smoking the Kraken. <laughs> Pal was, wasn't known just for talking crazy. She was also known for writing stupid because her legal documents were notoriously littered with spelling errors, misplaced states, and client mix-up. In one case, the court was misidentified as the United States District Court, Northern District of Georgia, while in another, she referred to the Superior Court of Arizona. I'm not surprised she spells like that. I mean, she got her degree from Herbert Lau. <laughs> Herbert Lau. Kirk and Herbert Beard. Kirk and Herbert Beard. Powell uh, pleaded guilty, guilty, to six counts of conspiracy related to her role in helping to carry out a breach of voting equipment in a rural Georgia county and will serve six years of probation. So she'll be able to go on with her normal life, wake up in her own bed, have breakfast in her own kitchen, and whisper to the coffee mug that the pancake griddle is taking orders from El Cartel de los Flapjacks. <laughs> Thank you. One, <laughs> one person. They say, they say if you can touch one person, <laughs> you really should touch more people than that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Pal was joined in the rat patrol by another Trump lawyer and guy thinking, oh, they mean jail, jail. <laughs> Kenneth Cheese Bro. Now, to be fair, Cheese Bro pronounces his name Ches Bro. Also, to be fair, I do not care how he pronounces his name. <laughs> he is a guy from Wisconsin. He is a Cheese Bro. <laughs> cheese Bro. Kenneth Cheesebro admitted he worked with Trump and other members of his inner circle to overturn the 2020 election by putting forward slates of fake Republican electors in multiple states that Trump lost. We should have known that Cheesebro was behind it all when the fake electors were named Rick Cotta, <laughs> Bibi Gouda, Monty Rajak, and Brie Larson. <laughs> now, that was worth it, baby. Yeah, yeah. That one was worth it. That's a Brie Larson. <laughs> now, uh, Cheesebro and Powell are set to testify against Trump, and reportedly, that has shattered any sense of invincibility that the former president may be feeling. I would love to be there for that realization. Wait a second. You're saying I'm not invincible? <laughs> so you can see me right now? <laughs> And you know that I'm in the women's locker room? <laughs> of course, Trump kept calm and freaked out on Truth Social this weekend, claiming, Ms. Powell was not my attorney and never was. <laughs> that is a bold claim, since he previously tweeted that she was one of his attorneys. Plus, there is a lot of footage of her with Rudy Giuliani seen here mid-leak. And no one, no one stands in the Giuliani splash zone pro bono. So, we caught him in a lie. Gotcha! Ha ha! Now what? It's been a long time coming. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. We finally... We finally caught him in a lie. We got him dead to rights on an old fibberoni. My work is done here. Goodbye, America. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm being told this isn't the first time he's lied. Yes. <laughs> How many times has he lied at this point? Um, Tom, can we, can we check in with our lie tracking intern? She's fine. She's fine. She gets college credit. She's fine. 
In the same post, Trump claimed that Powell was among the millions of people who thought that the 2020 presidential election was rigged and Stalin. <laughs> Looks like someone else went to Harvard Law. <laughs> oh, we have, a, we have an update on Trump betraying our country down at his Betraying Our Country Club. Recently, <laughs> we learned that after Trump left office, he shared nuclear submarine secrets with one Mar-a-Lago member, Australian billionaire and adult Ron Weasley that the police divers pulled from the river, <laughs> Anthony Pratt. Turns out, submarines were just a tiny part of what Trump blabbed to Pratt about, as we learned this weekend from 60 Minutes Australia. It's like American 60 Minutes, except the stopwatch goes the other way, <laughs> and it's hosted by Crocodile Stall. Now, Aussie 60 Minutes acquired secret recordings of Pratt in which he reveals that Trump also shared national security secrets while he was still president. In 2020, Trump told his billionaire buddy about a military strike in Iraq before Americans found out. I hadn't even heard it. It hadn't even been on the news yet. He said, I just bombed Iraq today. That was a top secret mission. What was it like in the White House war room? Great idea, General, and that's not just your commander in chief talking. That's also some Australian guy I know. He loves it. I got him on speakerphone right now. Anthony, Anthony, say shrimp on the Barbie. <laughs> they really talk that way. Say bloom and onion. <laughs> Pratt, oh, I don't know if they talk that way. Pratt also described his bonkers exchange between Trump and his first lady. Melania, who was sitting next to him at dinner, he said, I asked Melania to walk around the pool in a bikini so all the other guys could get a look at what they were missing. Then Melania said back to him, I'll do that when you walk around with me in your bikini. Now, of course, Donald Trump did not put on a bikini and walk around, but I asked my graphics department to mock up a photo <laughs> of, of what that might look like. So let's check in with them. How's that photo going, guys? Please. Please. We got a great show for you tonight. Daniel Radcliffe, Jonathan Groff, and Lindsay Mendez. But when we come back, 